my friend. Welcome to the Mentor Mom YouTube channel and I'm Jill. I'm the Mentor Mom. Today we are going to be talking about toys to get toddlers talking. So I'm going to share some of the favorites that I've used over the last 20 years as an in-home interventionist and tell you some tips on how to use them to help stimulate your toddler's language. So let's get to it. So today we're going to talk about some of my favorite toys that I've used over the last 20 years as an interventionist uh, to help get toddlers talking. And we are going to start with uh, manipulatives. Uh, but before I say any more, I want you to know that there is a link down in the description that you can click on that will give you access to a PDF download that talks about all of the different toys uh, that I'm sharing in this little video, as well as clickable links to Amazon. And no, I don't get any kickback or any kind of um, benefits from sharing this information with you. I just wanted to make sure that you knew where you could find them, uh, or at least to learn more about the toy. So let's start by talking about manipulatives. Manipulatives are stacking toys, blocks, things like that. Uh, what I'm showing here is a little uh, kind of stacking shape kind of sorter, and uh, this is a nice one. They're great for fine motor skills, which a lot of times we think, okay, that's going to help them with writing and all of that, but it also helps with self-care and feeding, right? They're working those little muscles in their hands and their wrists that help them with that when they're using manipulatives. So... One of the things that I like to do with these kind of manipulatives is to add language to the toys by pairing sounds and actions in play. So for example, with this particular uh, little set, you could just, as you drop them on, go boop, pow, bam, and try to add some sounds to work on imitation with your little ones. Uh, likewise, you could do the same with this wooden ring sorter. One thing I always like to let parents know is to realize that your child is gonna put things out in the wrong order we need to let them do that. Don't try to correct them during play. It's a natural part of a toddler's brain development. It's trial and error. They need to keep doing it until they've solidified what the rule is with these toys, which way they work best, which way they don't. So you really want to let them go ahead and make those mistakes. Um, so a tip for using a toy like this would be to incorporate some choices. So maybe you have two of the rings and you're like, do you want the orange one or do you want the red one? Now, having said that, we are not working on colors with toddlers. We're just trying to put in an opportunity for them to communicate, to make some eye contact. So we're going to position it by our, by our eyes uh, for them to be using or showing some initiation by reaching for the object, working on engagement. So choices is a nice uh, strategy to use with manipulatives and many other toys for that matter. This next one is a nice little cause and effect toy. Uh, I like this one a lot because it doesn't make a lot of real big sounds and buzzes and dings and things like that, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but these kinds of toys, these cause and effect toys are really great, especially for kids who lack a lot of engagement. They're difficult to get engaged. They're not so interested in play partners. Uh, you can target certain words like push and turn. Again, you can pair sounds and actions in play, bop, 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 as you push the buttons. So one tip that you can use with this one, uh, I've indicated be the keeper of the goods to encourage initiation. I would tweak that a little bit and say to use gentle interference. So with this particular toy in the past, I've had the parent put their hand over one of the buttons so that their child who's really not engaging or initiating a lot has to move their hand out of the way. So they're getting at least some interaction with their little one. And then they can model words like, oh, more? Uh, or move uh, just to try to build in some opportunities for some communication with their tot. So these cause and effect toys are a lot of fun for little ones who struggle with engagement. This next one is a little peep set that once it's closed is really, really hard for toddlers to get open. There aren't very many that are successful at getting this open. And so I like using toys that have lids or that are difficult for open to open because they're a great way to work on initiation. 
the goal would be that they would hand it to us or that they would look at us or that they would point to it or extend it to us in some way to let us know, hey, I need this thing open. And uh, once they hand it to you, you could target words like open or help or more. Uh, but the tip here is that you want to wait for them to initiate, right? So if they're struggling with it, um, but they haven't looked at you or reached for you or handed it to you, you don't really want to offer, oh, well, let me help get that open for you. You want to wait until they're somehow letting you know through their body language, gestures or tone of voice, eye contact, that they need some help with this because that's when they're most engaged and most interested and most motivated. And that's what we want to reinforce. So toys that are difficult to open can be a really great communication temptation for toddlers. Uh, the next one is a shape sorter. Um, these are great for, obviously, for motor skills and language. It's a kind of a staple with toddlers that we have shape sorters for them. Um, but one thing I want to say, <clears throat> excuse me, is that you want to look for simple shape sorters. I see so many out there that have like 10 to 15 different shapes and sizes and slots. We really want our little ones to be successful when they're using the shape sorter. So try to find some that really only have like three different shapes, circle, square, and a triangle like this one by Fisher Price. You can pair sounds and actions and play in it by going bop, 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 or boom. This is one where you could be the keeper of the goods, a strategy I just mentioned in, in the previous slide. Uh, where you maybe have the two different uh, shapes and um, as your child wants one, they have to initiate with you. And then you could be like, oh, more, or you could do a choice, whatever. Uh, the idea is, is that you have it, they want it, they have to request it from you somehow, maybe eye contact or vocalization, or like I said, maybe they're reaching to take it out of your hand, giving you an opportunity to model a word that you would ultimately like them to say in that situation. Uh, another uh, communication temptation could be like this one, I think has a little button that actually does play music, which you want to turn the button off because if the toy's making noise, they don't need to be, and we want them making the noise. Uh, but for some of those kids who are really focused on the noise, you can turn the button off and then again use that gentle interference, put your hand over the button, and when they go to move it, model a word like, oh, you want more music or uh, move. So it becomes a communication temptation in and of itself. Next up are stacking cups. Lots of things to do with stacking cups. Obviously we can stack them. We can pretend to drink from them. We can put different things in them like cars and toy animals and things like that. Uh, one thing, again, we wanna set our little ones up for success with the toys because we don't want them to lose interest in it because they can't quite figure it out or get it to work in a way that is interesting for them. So you might wanna start with fewer cups. I know I've been on many a home visit with stacking cups where I myself struggled to get all eight cups put together in an efficient way. So maybe with your little one, you start with just maybe three cups or four cups. Uh, so another uh, fun activity to do is to stack them up and have them kick them down. It's a nice way to work on balance and uh, standing on one foot for a second. And you can incorporate all sorts of language into uh, the cups with up, 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 or if you're drinking from them, going ah, or mm, or kick if they're kicking them over. And they're great in the bathtub. They're a lot of fun for kids in the bathtub. Uh, similarly, the stacking boxes, I really like this set. They're also great for motor planning and those uh, developmental um, fine motor skills. Uh, stacking helps with cognition, all sorts of great things. Uh, you can build more vocabulary into this by incorporating some common objects like cars or like in this one, they have dinosaurs in there. I don't know that I would do dinosaurs uh, in, I think it comes with the dinosaurs, uh, just because they're a little bit harder to say. Uh, but you could put other toy animals in there. You could even put like a small shoe or a sock. Anything that gives you an opportunity to label an object that's meaningful in your child's daily uh, routine. So stacking boxes are super cool. We got pop beads. These are great for hand strength and visual perceptual skills, and they actually help kids as they're learning how to do all that coordination, setting the foundation to help them with skills that they're gonna need for writing and using scissors later on. I like to use the pop beads to focus on certain sounds with kids, especially the P sounds, so pop, pull, push. Nice way to work on those different sounds with little ones who might be struggling with that particular uh, phoneme. 
the piggy bank love the piggy bank this one is one of my favorites um, a tip for you is if you have this piggy bank is to turn it so that the door is facing your stomach and you're the one that's kind of in control of hanging onto the piggy bank while your child is putting the coins in uh, that way because those smart kids figure out now I'm just gonna you're trying to get me to, to say words while you're offering me these coins I'm just gonna grab the one that I keep putting in from this door so but you want to do some blocking so that they have to ask you for more so again you can do work on initiation by offering choices being the keeper of the goods pairing sounds and actions bop bop boom um, one tip that you can do is you can take and uh, if you go to Pinterest uh, under speech and language and piggy bank you'll see all sorts of different things come up with free downloadable uh, images that you can cut out and stick on the actual coins that can then add an extra layer of language about it so maybe it's a picture of a cat or a car or a dog so it can even enhance and add more language to this play routine and the kids really really like this one the aquadoodle it's never too start too early to start working on holding implements uh, this is a fun one to pair sounds and actions and play so dot 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 zoom zip whatever sounds you want to do kids really like the aqua doodle you can do the same thing with crayons uh, it's a nice way to kind of get them used to using some implements but in a safe and clean way a lot of times parents don't think about letting their little ones have crayons at, at a young age because they're worried that they're just going to end up all over the house. So put some parameters around it. You know, the crayons stay at the table. You may feel free to go wherever you want. But getting them used to the whole idea of using an implement is a great uh, foundation that you're setting for them for later on. Okay, the wooden latch toys. These are always a favorite from kids. Keep them really interested. You can target words like open and shut as you're opening and shutting the different doorways. A uh, tip if you want to add some additional language to it would be to, again, take some of your own pictures or images that you've printed off or cut out from a magazine and tape them underneath the door so that you can really target and focus. Maybe you want to focus on words that begin with the word B to help your child be able to do that sound. Or maybe you want to focus on uh, more familiar objects that your child is not necessarily recognizing like cup or shoe or banana so you can really customize this and uh, focus on things that you really want to work on with your child next up are wooden puzzles these are awesome I love puzzles kids who are good at puzzles usually end up being good readers it actually helps them develop the muscles that they're gonna need uh, someday to read read words across a page so puzzle play is really important but like I've been talking about how we want to set our kids up for success, it's the same with wooden puzzles. The rule of thumb is really one piece for every year of age. Now, having said that, you can't find a puzzle that has only one piece or two pieces. But you can find uh, some of these like Melissa and Doug puzzles that only have three pieces. If your little one is kind of struggling with puzzles and not really interested in it, you definitely want to start with those three shapes, circle, square, triangle. And the reason is it's a little bit easier for them to be successful because no matter which way I'm turning the circle, it's always going to fit in that spot. And the same with the square. I have different ways that I can turn it. And even if I'm doing it, you know, to the right or to the left, eventually if I turn it enough, it'll fit in there. But when we have um, puzzle pieces like uh, the one here uh, that's pictured on the screen, there's only one way that that dog piece goes in to that, to that hole. So it can make it a little bit more challenging for them. And some kids just get frustrated and move on. So you want to try to keep it simple. So you can forego the big alphabet puzzle for <laughs> to begin with. They can work on that down the road once they get really good. You want to build their skills and their confidence. Uh, so again, you can pair some sounds and actions and play to keep it fun and engaging. I, a lot of times will take the puzzle pieces and go bop, bop, boom as I pop them in or fly them like an airplane. Mmm, pow, as I put them in. It makes it a little bit more interesting and engaging for toddlers. And it's a great way to work on imitation. You can also uh, be the keeper of the goods with the puzzle pieces. Or hand them the wrong puzzle piece when they have uh, one piece left. If you've got a couple of different pieces, give them a piece from the wrong puzzle. Sometimes that uh, opens up some opportunity for some different communication. Uh, wooden blocks, they're a must-have. Uh, they help with lots of different learning skills, problem solving, uh, play skills, visual perceptual. Again, incorporate sounds and actions into play. 
Uh, you can also keep it fresh and exciting by incorporating toy animals. I've done that before where I brought farm animals into it and set up fences and made beds and the cows slept and they woke up and they drank from the blue cube. So you can act out like daily routines using the uh, blocks. So it's a nice way to add some extra vocabulary. I brought cars into block play before and made roads and ramps and things like that. Another thing that you can do is you can actually put some stickers on the sides of the cube so that as they're stacking or building, you can be like, oh, look at that. This one has a cat. Can you find the apple? So if you can find some small stickers of familiar objects, you can put them on the blocks to keep it interesting for your little one as well. Okay, so let's move on and talk a little bit about pretend play. So pretend play really is fantastic for language. It fosters creativity and offers lots of opportunities for language building and working on especially receptive language. But one thing uh, I always like to share with parents is to understand that not all kids naturally move into pretend play. Some kids really need to be shown what they can do with the toys in different ways. So for example, I had a little girl one time that I was working with who I brought a farm set over and she just kind of put the animals in and out of the barn. Once I showed her that, you know, we could pretend that they're taking a nap, that they're waking up, that they're going for a ride to the store and the tractor. Once she saw that, she was like, oh, Oh, and she started imitating all of those things. But until she saw that, she was just kind of like, well, I don't know what to do with this. I'm just going to keep putting them in and out. So you want to model different things that they can do with those toys to help move them towards pretend play. So every kid should have a pretend play kitchen. It's one of the best ways to work on language. It doesn't have to be a store-bought kitchen. I've seen some parents take like a Rubbermaid container and draw heating elements on it and then just keep the toys, uh, the plates and things like that inside the container. It doesn't have to be store-bought um, uh, dishes and things like that too. It can be old pots and pans or old plastic dishes, uh, plastic cups. So you can really make your own little set of the foods and uh, the dishes for your child. But doing the pretend play with those kinds of objects really offers lots of great language opportunities. And that's because you're mimicking meal and snack time routines that they're already hearing and seeing uh, as a part of their day. So it just gives you more opportunities to practice that repetition of those really familiar words. It also offers a really great opportunity to work on listening and understanding. So uh, as far as like the foods go, you can use boxes of old foods that are empty and uh, just tape them up. You can use those in your pretend play food kit. Uh, I like wooden play food sets, uh, but you want to make sure you try to find a set that actually has some things in there that your child eats. Sometimes they have some really bizarre things like eggplant that a lot of kids don't eat. Uh, so I like the wooden ones. They're easy to keep clean. They don't you don't get a million different pieces with them. And some of them actually have the opportunity where you can chop them up and they have like Velcro in them. So it's really uh, keeps it a little bit more interesting for the kids. Uh, so a tip would be to work on getting them to follow directions by giving simple directions like give me the banana. So we're working on that understanding and that receptive language, which is really important. If I don't understand what that word represents, I'm not going to be able to say that word yet. Okay, so... Uh, Pretend play is a great way to work on listening and understanding. This next set is a fun little uh, wooden cookie set. It's great for fine motor. Again, this is one that has the uh, Velcro in it and the chopping knives by Melissa and Doug. Again, you can target certain words like eat, cut, or chop, pair sounds and actions and play. You can also give them directions like, you know, bring a baby into the play and ask them, you know, can you feed the baby a cookie? So one big tip that I like to give when we're talking about play is to make sure that you follow your child's lead in play. You want them to be the boss. And this is sometimes hard for, for parents. You know, we kind of are already thinking down the road and how can I build in more learning opportunities for your child? But what happens is, is sometimes we kind of overtake and make it less fun for them and then they want to disengage. They really want to be in control, especially two-year-olds. So let them take the lead and let them be the boss in play. It's a really great way to work on continuing to build more circles of communication and engagement with your little one. 
So baby dolls, they're another great way to work on following simple directions and play. It offers lots of opportunities for repetition of words and phrases that they're already hearing, like bottle and eat and diaper. Uh, so having a little bottle of food set uh, and baby plates and dishes, you can work on giving them some directions like, can you feed the baby? Can you hug the baby? The baby's cold. Can you cover her with a blanket? Those are all great ways to work on comprehension in that receptive language, but in a playful, fun way for your child. Music is a great way to work on imitation. Uh, you'll notice, I love this plastic uh, cheapo microphone. You'll notice that this microphone is not electric. I know that there is a newer model out there that has all sorts of buttons and sounds. I'm going to say avoid that one and use this one instead, the cheapo plastic. It's only powered by the voice. That's it. There's no bells and whistles to it. And uh, again, if the toy makes noise, then the child doesn't have to. They're not as motivated sometimes to use the ones that are already making the music and, and a lot of different sounds. So this one is a great one, especially for kids who are sometimes a little bit stubborn, um, that don't like to imitate. Sometimes if you start with just some silly sounds like bop, 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 and then give them a turn, and then bop, 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 and give them another turn. I've had kids as they start to imitate, then I'll throw in a word like bop, 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 ball, and have them do it, and they'll actually start imitating some words, which is something that they hadn't done before. So I really like using this uh, microphone. It's a popular one with the little ones, and it's cheap. So I want to talk a little bit about active play uh, because I know that it can be a real challenge to work on language with movers and shakers, those really busy kids that are bouncing off of the walls and jumping off of the back of the couch. So with them, we really want to incorporate language and physical play activities into um, the language into their physical play because it increases the engagement and the learning. If we're pairing words and sounds and things like that with their, their physical play, they're like, oh, my mom and dad are playing with me, and they're normally telling me stop and sit down and stop moving so much. So we get a lot of really great engagement when we take those movers and shakers and incorporate the language into things that they're already enjoying. So tunnels are a great way to work on getting input into the muscles and the joints in the legs and the arms. So this is a good one for kids who are doing a lot of throwing, looking for sensory input. So you can incorporate engagement and working on engagement by doing peekaboo, maybe for little ones who aren't all that interactive. Uh, you can work on rolling a ball or a toy truck through the tunnel. And this is a nice one to work on initiation. So you they roll the ball, ball to you or the truck to you, and then you kind of stop and you wait for them to somehow indicate that they want you to do it again. Target words like more or go. So tunnels are fun. Crawling is a great activity for kids. Uh, this uh, rainbow softball is a popular one. It makes some sounds and provides some sensory interest because it's got other little balls on the inside. So this one sometimes keeps kids a little bit more engaged because there is that extra sensory component to it. You can roll it back and forth or kick it, uh, but you can wait for your child to initiate by throwing it to you or bringing it to you. And this is also a really nice one uh, for little ones who maybe are not yet crawling. Sometimes this one will encourage them to crawl a little bit to try to get the reaction of pushing the ball and hearing the sounds of the other balls on the inside. Also great to work on um, walking and hanging on to something and kicking. Okay, stomp rockets. Love stomp rockets. They are great for working, obviously, on balance and coordination, but they're also great for working on initiation. A lot of times little ones need help with getting the rockets on the launch pad. Sometimes they don't step hard enough on it to set the, the rocket off. So it's a great way to work and target words like more and help. In the meantime, they're getting this fun activity of jumping up and down on this thing and running around to go catch the rockets. Uh, but you're adding all sorts of language to the activity. The sack swing, love the sack swing as well. This is a great one for kids who maybe get a little bit more overwhelmed by what's going on around them because it kind of tunes out some of this extra sensory input. It's a nice calming activity. So uh, having a little one sit inside the sack swing and you're kind of just moving it gently back and forth. You can swing it and then stop, see if they look at you. Then you could model, oh, you want more? Do it again. So it's a nice way to work on initiation. Uh, 
I'm not sure about this particular model, but uh, the old IKEA sack swing actually supported up to 250 pounds. So I've had some parents who have ordered them over the years that actually get in them with their little ones and use that time to look at books because the child's kind of feeling all snuggled in and everything's tuned out and it allows them to feel a little bit more comfortable sitting and actually looking at a book for a, a longer period of time. So the sack swing is really nice for those little ones who uh, really like that kind of movement and find it calming or get overwhelmed by the stimulation in the environment. Uh, music again, these are great for movers and shakers because you can have them hopping all over the place while they shake these little maracas. Uh, music is one of the best ways to work on language with the little ones. It lights up every area of the brain when they're exposed to it. You can work on following directions like put it on your head, put it near your knee, uh, go high, go low, go fast, go slow. And then you can also pair sounds and actions and target words like shake up and down. So this little radio flyer wagon, I've actually not seen it in person, but um, push toys where kids have to do a little bit more work, heavy work, it, uh, is a great way to kind of wear some of that energy out. And then you can incorporate listening skills in this one. So when I'd read about this one online, it said that there was something in the wheels that kind of kept it from like zipping along too fast, which is the problem with a lot of the push toys. And a lot of the push toys are really tippy, like the grocery carts and baby strollers and things like that. They're real tippy. So if your child's a little unsteady, it could tip over quite easily. The other thing is, because we're talking about movers and shakers, is you're really looking for ways to give them some work. And those really light toys as they're pushing them around, just don't give them enough bang for their buck. So you could take something like this and put like a bunch of heavy books in it, um, some heavy bags, you know, some bags of beans, whatever, and then have your little one push it around, you know, go, 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 go fast, go slow. You can work on listening skills by putting some specific things in there and say, can you put that on the couch? Can you put that on the table? Can you put that in the kitchen? So you're really working on their ability to follow some simple directions. The ball and hammer toys, those are always super popular. You could target simple sounds like boom and bam to encourage uh, imitation. In the meantime, they're getting this input into their arms. Try to make sure that they use both arms. So give them the hammer. Let's try it in the other hand. So they're getting the input in both of their arms. Uh, this is a great one to be the keeper of the goods, to work on them requesting. So maybe you have a hang on to the balls and they have to initiate with you to request the balls. Then we have the slide. I recommend this all the time to families who have those kids that are literally bouncing off the walls, climbing on furniture, jumping off couches, climbing onto the counters. Having a slide in the house is a great way to be able to redirect them from an undesirable activity that they're doing, like jumping off of the back of the couch, to something that's more appropriate, like climbing up uh, uh, the, the steps of and going down the slide. You know, because their their body and their brain, the brain is telling their body, you need to go, 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 jump, climb, run. If we can redirect them, we still allow them to meet that need, but in a safer way. And you can incorporate the language into it by, you know, going up, 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 or one, two, three, and then working and listening so that they wait until you say go. You can also do gentle interference by blocking their ability to go down so that they have to somehow let you know, hey, like move your arm and you can be, oh, you want to do more. So you can still build language into this activity. So if you've got a little one who's bouncing off of the walls and climbing on everything, you can move them off of the couch and say, oh, we climb on the slide and just keep redirecting them over there. Eventually they'll start to figure out, okay, I get it. I can climb on this, but I'm not climbing on that. So it can be a real... Um, energy saver for parents down the road with those really busy and active kids. And then finally, the bowling ball set. This is a great one for throwers, kids who are just randomly throwing to toys because they're looking for input into their arms. Uh, so I usually suggest that you take a, a big sock, fill it with a bag of beans or some, some uncooked rice and tie a knot in it and have them throw that because the ball that comes with these kits, it's really lightweight. There's not a whole lot of work that they're doing when they're throwing that ball. Again, we're looking for heavy work. We want the muscles to really feel the throwing and the rolling of the ball so that we get more bang for our buck. 
So you can work on initiation and imitation with this one by maybe hanging on to the ball. You could target words like go and boom, work on counting. But this is a great one for throwers. Okay, so I am going to talk about books, uh, but I'm going to do that in my next video because uh, there's a little bit more to that and I don't want to take too much of your time. So the books that I like and recommend are on that PDF list, which you can uh, get by clicking on the link in the description below. Um, but a few reminders before, we, before I let you go. Uh, I always tell parents that ultimately you need to be the best toy in the room. We want your kids to figure out that everything, all of this play that I do is so much more fun when I do it with somebody else. This is where that social engagement comes, right? And that's where the magic of communication and language occurs. So you really need to be actively engaged during the play because it enhances your child's learning so much more. Uh, so the other piece is that children learn best during interactions with others and not from screens. Watching TV, playing on the iPad, that is passive learning. They get no feedback from those things. Whereas when I'm interacting with somebody else, there's all of these other nuances to it. There's body language, facial expression, tone of voice. You know, 93% of communication is all about that. Only 7% is actually about our vocabulary. So it's a much more powerful, powerful learning and teaching tool for our children than screens and TVs. So I'm going to get off of that soapbox there. Uh, so that is it for today. I hope you found this information helpful. And this would be great if you download the PDF. Great to share with grandmas and grandpas and aunties and uncles. If you've got uh, your child's got a birthday coming up and you're like, wow, I really would love to see them get some toys that we can really do some language stuff with. So go ahead and download the PDF if that's what you're looking for. And I, again, I hope you found this information helpful. Next time we'll be talking more about books and book recommendations, as well as some tips on how to keep toddlers interested in books and story time. So until then, uh, make sure that you subscribe and uh, follow my YouTube channel and sign up for my newsletter. And I'll send you weekly tips and strategies related to early childhood development of toddlers and preschoolers. So thank you guys for being here and I will see you next time.